Hey, what's up? Hello, everyone. Welcome into Fantasy Film Ball, the show where we turn movies into sports and sports into something we don't talk about here. My name is Matt. My name is Dill, and today we have our first, you know, award predictions. The Gotham's, you know, the $35 million budget caps are a thing of the past. So now let's dive into predicting our winners for this upcoming ceremony. And I guess let's just start off best feature, passages, past lives, reality, showing up a thousand and one. To me, at least, past lives should win this easy, no question. But if it doesn't win, a thousand and one kind of hit every nomination it really needed to. So that could be the upset that just delivers this death blow to past lives and its overall awards chances. But why wouldn't past lives win this award? Yeah, in the past, the Gotham Awards have always, always gone with the strongest film in the best picture race, except for one time in 2018 when they didn't. But last year, they gave it to Everything Ever All at Once. In 2021, they gave it to The Lost Daughter. 2020, they gave it to Nomadland. 2019, Marriage Story. And then the streak ends because they gave it to The Rider instead of giving it to The Favorite or If Beale Street Could Talk or First Reformed. If they gave it to Everything Ever All at Once last year, they're giving it to Past Lives this year. Anything other than Past Lives just means that Past Lives can't even get support in the place where it should be guaranteed support. Now we dive over to Best Screenplay, which I think is kind of an interesting category when you compare it to Best Feature, because uh, oh, yeah. there's zero overlap. No crossover. Our nominees are All of Us Strangers, Anatomy of a Fall, May December, RMN and the zone of interest. So like, I don't know, anatomy makes the most sense. I wouldn't be shocked of a May December where it just takes this award, but I mean, look at the track record, doesn't really make the most sense. So I guess I'll go with strangers, but I don't, I don't really feel good about that just because it led in nominations. They usually take a main category winner or nominee. Like last year, Tar took it because everything ever all at once wasn't nominated in the category. In prior years, they've gone with things that have gone on to get screenplay nominations later. That that kind of narrows it down for me to All of Us Strangers, Anatomy of a Fall, and May December. I'm going to say RMN, Zone of Interest are not happening. I think I'm going to go with Strangers, though. It just feels right to me. They seem to really love it across the board. I'll go with Strangers, but I have a small part of me that's saying May December can take it. Our documentary feature predictions are looking at the category at the Gotham's. Our nominees are 20 Days in Mariupol, Against the Tide, Apollonia, Apollonia, Four Daughters, and Our Body. I'm gonna let you take this category out first because I'm not really sure what to do here. If you look at the past 10 years, the category, they typically don't go with the Oscar winner, which is 20 Days in Mariupol. But that said, in the past 10 years, they've only nominated the eventual Oscar winner four times. They did it with Summer of Soul, with American Factory, with Citizen Four, and with OJ Made in America. Three of those four did win. What it says to me is that the Oscar winner is not likely to be nominated, but if it is nominated, it is likely to win, which is why I am going with 20 Days in Mariupol, because the only time that they've nominated the Oscar winner and it didn't win the prize was Summer of Soul, which lost to Fleet. Interesting. I was going to say the one that wouldn't have won would have been American Factory because the other three were just pure sweepers throughout, like what we're predicting 20 Days in Mario to be. But that's a very interesting thing. And the movie that it lost to, I would say, was the number two in the category. Beyond Utopia is clearly not here, but Four Daughters is. Maybe that's a potential upset, but after hearing your set of how they're three for four with the eventual Oscar winners, I guess I'll agree with here again. So we're three for three correlation with 20 Days in Mario Pool. Well, that brings us to Best International Feature. All of Us Strangers pops his head up again. Anatomy of Fall, Poor Things, Totem, and Zone of Interest. This is just our screenplay category. Just change out RMN. Totem probably is not going to win this award. So that makes our other four, which also show up in screenplay. Poor Things is here. So to me, that means Poor Things probably wins. But if they do an upset, Zone of Interest is here because that's the inner international feature but i just don't see how a voting body when they have poor things as an option is going to go against poor things i mean last year the banshees of nasharan was here and it lost to happening so it has mm -hmm. happened before they could absolutely go with something else so i'm not going to go with poor things i do think everything but totem has a winning argument i could see strangers take it it's the most nominated same with zone of interest it's you know they have a lot of love for that poor things like you said it's a front runner for many many categories in other award shows but 
it's not in any other category here, which is a little bit weird. And Anatomy of a Fall, of course, yeah, that has a huge argument to win. But I think I'm going to go with the Zone of Interest. It seems like the type of thing that they'd do. It seems like the type of cool winner that they'd want to go with to be like, we are choosing the important film. That now dives us into Breakthrough Director. I would say the easiest award of the show. I mean, we have Raven Jackson for All Dirt Road Taste Assault, Georgia Oakley for Blue Jean, Michelle Garza Savarte for Horsera, Celine Song for Past Lives, and A.D. Rockwell for A Thousand One. And I mean, even if Past Lives happens to lose picture, I don't see how Celine Song loses this award. Yep, same. Easiest category, it's Celine Song. Now I'll take the lead performance category. We have Anjanue Ellis Taylor for Origin, Lily Gladstone for The Unknown Country, Greta Lee for Past Lives, Franz Rogowski for Passages, Babatita Sajo for Our Father the Devil, Andrew Scott, All of Us Strangers, Kaylee Spaney, Priscilla, Tayana Taylor, A Thousand and One, Michelle Williams, Showing Up, and Jeffrey Wright for American Fiction. I've looked back at the past few years of this lead performance category, and oftentimes they'll pick something that seems like it should go very far, something that seems like it should be a, a bit of a critic darling, very indie, that ends up kind of petering out. Like last year, they picked Danielle Deadweiler. The year before, they did a split between Olivia Coleman for The Lost Daughter, who did get the Oscar nomination, and I can't remember his name, but it was for The Killing of Kenneth Chamberlain. To me, what feels like the winner here is Tayana Taylor. And I think Tayana Taylor winning for 1001 is going to make people think that she's going to get a ton of other awards, a ton of critics love, which I don't think will happen. But if it's not Tayana Taylor, I would say I think it's going to go to either Greta Lee for Past Lives or Andrew Scott for All of Us Strangers. Well, personally, I would love to see Tiana Taylor walk away with this award. This is the same body that kicked off both Troy Kotzer and Kiki Kwan's Oscar eventual runs. And yeah, I know that was in supporting, but that could work here in lead as well for Kaylee Spaney and Priscilla. This is a performance that really needs that buzz to continue its way throughout award shows. Spaney is a rising person in this industry. She seems like someone who they could go for. I mean, this movie isn't like Till in that way, but it's also an acting showcase for its leading performance like Till was. And I guess you can say the same for 1001 as well. 1001 was more widely regarded across the nomination categories here, but I don't know. I'm just feeling spainy when I first see these. I could see maybe Anjanou Ellis Taylor or even Tiana Taylor. Then in Outstanding Supporting Performance, we have Juliette Binoche for The Taste of Things, Penelope Cruz for Ferrari, Jamie Foxx for They Cloned Tyrone, Claire Foy, All of Us Strangers, Ryan Gosling, Barbie, Glenn Howerton, Blackberry, Sandra Huller for The Zone of Interest, Rachel McAdams for Are You There God, It's Me Margaret, Charles Melton for May December, and Divine Joy Randolph for The Holdovers. And I think the thing we both have to reckon with here is, is Ryan Gosling too big for this category? Or is he just going to begin his sort of sweep here? What do you think, Dylan? I'm at two hearts with this because clearly they show throughout most of these categories, they want to stick more towards movies that would be eligible without this extra box office added in. But this category is where we see most of those come in. I mean, we have Ferrari here. We have Barbie here. I think the holdovers would exceed that budget cap as well. So like we see other people come into this category. So this seems like where they may, but this is an award voted by everyone involved. Barbie showed up nowhere else. So to me, Gosling makes the most sense, but I'm going to say the body as a whole would go against Barbie and they're going to go with someone more like Charles Melton, where it's like, we want to recognize someone who may not get recognition elsewhere. So I'm going to lean Melton, but I wouldn't be shocked at all if Gosling walks away. At the same time, they didn't do something that they didn't think anyone else would do last year with Ki Hui Kwan. I'm also torn between, do they see Barbie and ignore it because they're an indie group? Or because Barbie is the one blockbuster here, does he stand out so much from the list as like a weird nominee that he'll draw people to vote for him? And I think so. I think that this is the beginning of his sweep. I say Ryan Gosling wins, but if Ryan Gosling loses, it's a toss-up between Glenn Howerton and Charles Melton. So for everyone out there, we would love to hear your predictions for this award show. Drop them down in the comments below. Consider subscribing as we're going to be covering all of these award shows for the rest of the race. And drop a like. It helps our channel grow. Keeps you connected. As well as introduces new people here to what we have going on. But until next time, my name is Dill. And my name is Matt. And this has been Fantasy Film Ball.